Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and welcome back to another rapid fire critique where I take 10 of your best photos and give them a critique or critiquerson. Now, if you'd like to submit your best 10 images and make them your best 10 images for sure, because I don't want to see your worst 10 images, go over to bit.ly slash fro critiques and that's where you can submit them. And this video is brought to you by fro pack one. Our presets go to fronosphoto.com slash presets if you want to check those out. Right here, we've got photos by Kasser Van Nasserayam. Hey Fro, I'm a 17 year old photographer from Perth, Australia. I'm new at doing photography for about a year, mate. Oh, oh, Jiminy Cricket. Oh, blimey. Uh, uh, Bindi Irwin. Robert Irwin so happens to be a good photographer, by the way. I will get him on the air one day. I will get Bobby Irwin on the phone. If you want to be called Robert, Robert, I'll call you. So if anybody knows Robert, have him message me and I want to critique your, no, I don't want to critique your work. I want to talk to you. Instagram me. Okay, so here we have the best 10 photos. Let's see what we're working with. We've got Canon EOS M50 with the 51.8 STM. All right. So we've got a mirrorless camera. I've got an EOS M50. I use it for bloggy McBloggersons. So first fro photos, not bad. So we can see that the Perth sun in Australia is over here in this area lighting up the side of her face. She's more like, why are you taking my photo? Like uh, in an Australian accent, which mine sucks. Let's see what it's taken at. Uh, F2.8, 50 millimeters, 1 400th of a second, ISO 200, that's perfectly fine. Probably focused right here on the eye. Uh, it's okay, There's what I would do is go into the eyeball just a little bit and brighten it maybe 10 to 15 to 19 percent in Lightroom just to make it pop just a little bit off of the eye. For the most part, I like what's going on here. It, it's, you know, it's surprise, like surprise, and the background's out of focus, yet you still know that they're at the beach and that there's sharks in that water and that there's probably turtles and everything in Australia will kill you. But moving on to the next image, that's sweet, really nice. What is this one shot with? EOS M50? Uh, 2, 8, 50 millimeter again, 1 1,000th one of a second at 200 ISO. This is very nice. Really nice job on this image. I like your processing. Uh, I like the exposure. I like the composition. I love the fact that you're using out of focus branches to draw you into the subject. This is what I'm talking about. Age doesn't matter because you could be 37 and not know what you're doing. But at 17, nice job so far. This is pretty good. This is what I'm looking for, guys. I want to see people using out of focus objects to draw you in. Because remember, photography is a 2D medium. It's flat. But if you can add dimension to it, that means you're doing something right. Just like in the first, I just wanted to fix my glasses. I'm fixing his glasses. Just like in the first image where you got a surprise look. And if you remember a couple of critiques ago where it was just the models just didn't exude any emotion. They just didn't look good. This, you know, it's the photographer's job to draw that out of the subject, like I've said, out of the model. Now this is good because she's got a slight little smirk, she's moving her hair back, her eyes are exposed nicely, the color is nice coming from that uh, sun in Australia because they have a different sun than, than we have over here, it's totally different, and it just looks good. So moving on. Oh, I was just talking about models that are uh, making faces. Okay. So this to me is like, ah, I have no arms. Look at me. I'm just a torso and a head. Well, I certainly hope this guy has arms and he's not missing his arms because then I'd feel really bad. But I don't think he's missing his arms. I don't think he's missing his arms. What I would do in this situation is I would come in a little tighter. You are leaving a lot of dead space here that's making it awkward because the arms are missing. So if I'm going to go ahead and do this, I probably would have done a portrait more along the lines of this. That's where I would have done the portrait because maybe a little lower, less headroom. So there's a couple of ways you could do this and obviously it's a little more difficult when you're, you don't have the image, but so something like this. I want the eyes above the center of the frame. I don't like eyes that are centered right here in the middle. I like the eyes to be above. I like about this much headroom up top. It's just a feel thing and fill the frame a little more. But remember, when you're filling the frame like this, don't fill it with the eyes right in the middle. And by fill it, I don't mean a fillet. 
Because that's what they call fillets over in Europe. They're like, I'll take a fillet. Don't ask me where my brain went to that. Well, I guess because I said fillet. Fill the frame. And don't put the eyes right in the middle. But it's okay. Processing, it's contrasty. I like that, but a little too warm on the face. And we need to get some kick light up in those eyes, whether you do that in Lightroom just a little bit or bounce some light in there would be good. Okay, same thing here. You gotta come in tighter. But I like the fact you're at 2.8, 50 millimeters. You're blowing the background out of focus. I like that. But either get his hands in there in his pockets, because I can see they're in his pockets even though I can't see. Maybe he has no hands. Maybe the other guy had no arms and this guy has no hands, which means that they technically both had no hands if the other guy had no arms, because you can't have hands if you don't have arms. At least I don't think so. You gotta come in tighter. This is just a snapshot. Processing, editing, fine, good. You gotta come in tighter. You gotta either, well, you gotta either come in tighter on this one, or being that you're shooting with a 51.8, you could shoot at 1.8, focus in on that eye, step back, get his full body in there, fill the frame, and blow out the background. You could totally do that, because you're processing every, hey, I'm a lamb. Bah. Wait, do lambs go bah, or do sheep go bah? What do lambs say, guys? Mm, nobody's there. Nobody, nobody's listening to me in the other room. Lambs are like, lamb. And sheep are like, bah. I don't, I don't know my animals. I need to go back to the farm. Anyway, this is good. You know why I like this? What is this lens? Oh, this is a 22 millimeter F2. So super, uh, it's, a, it's a wide, well, it's sort of a wide, it's not really a wide angle because when you multiply it by 1.6, you're getting uh, in the 40 millimeters-ish or something like that. 2.8, one, wow, one thirty-two hundredth of a second at 400 ISO. This is the time where you could drop your ISO. A lot of people are like, oh, why didn't you drop your ISO? You know what? Doesn't matter in this photo. The photo's fine. But if we're gonna play the math game, you don't need to be at 1 hundredth of a second to freeze this baby thing. Goat, I think you're a goat. I think this is a goat. He doesn't have horns because he's a baby. But you don't need to be at 1 thousandth of a second. So let's play the math game here. You're at 1 thousandth of a second at 28 at 400 ISO. Now let's drop the ISO to 200 because I don't think this camera goes to 100. We drop it to 200. We took away one stop of light. What could we do? Well, we could actually open up this aperture from 2.8 down one stop if you wanted, but in this case, I wanna drop that shutter speed. So we can go from 1 thousandth, sorry, 1 hundredth of a second, you can have it, which gets you 1 hundredth of a second at 200 ISO at 2.8, and you have the same exact exposure, and you're still freezing the motion because you're not gonna get this thing moving at all. That's how simple the exposure triangle is. It's all cause and effect. If I do this, this is gonna happen. If I do that, that's gonna happen. Just think about it logically. If I take away one part of light, I need to either put another part back of light in to get that same exposure. And that's education. Next shot. Oh, I'm a bunny rabbit. Oh, look at me. Oh, will you pet my stomach? Oh, and give me a carrot. Is that a bunny rabbit or is that a cat? No, that's a bunny rabbit. You know, you know what could be really sad about this? Well, I like the image. It's a little overexposed to me. I would cut it back. I would bring it back one, two thousand. Holy shit, why are you at one eight? Why are you at 800 ISO on this one at one two thousandth of a second? Again, if I didn't know the settings, I wouldn't have yelled at the guy. So it's not that big of a deal to have your settings there because it still works but you could cut those down. I think that's a wabbit. Oh, it's a wabbit. Oh, wascally wabbit. Maybe you could get a lucky, did you know lucky rabbit's tails feet are actually rabbit's feet? Can you believe they cut, they kill rabbits just for their feet and they dye it purple? I don't want that keychain with a rabbit toenail in it. That's like cutting off, well, that guy's hands and using it for a keychain. Don't do that. But I like this rabbit, he's cute. So I like, I like what's going on here. You're focused right there. Everything else is out of focus. Oh, hey, speaking of out of focus. Now this isn't out of focus. This is motion blur. This is done with the 22 millimeter, one, one fifteenth of a second, 200 ISO, f2.8. Okay. I don't hate it. I don't hate it because I used to do stuff like this when I was doing uh, band stuff and you're trying to do something different. Now, it's not original, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's playing around. What I like about this shot is that 
the young photographer here, the young Padawan, Anakin Walker, is Anakin Walker? Was his name Anakin Skywalker? Yeah, why well, call him Anakin Walker? I forgot the sky part. Um, I like that they're trying different things, playing around. That is what is so great about digital photography is that you can change your exposure, play around, take a picture. If you liked it and you did something right, you do it again. If you didn't, you try something else and you learn. In this case, at 1 15th of a second, you're gonna get blur at F2.2. Let's see, 2.2, sorry, it's at 2.8 at, at, at ISO 200. But at 15th of a second, this works. Not the greatest thing ever, but it works because I like seeing the trying. That's what I like about it. I like this. Though, what would make this better, this reminds me of um, uh, Remember the Titans, the movie. What I would like is to bring the exposure down. Let's see, we're at F8, 1, 1 60th of a second at 800 ISO with the 35 to 63 IS. This is the kit 15 to 45 lens that it comes with. Not a great lens. I, I would have shot this, and you're at 15 millimeters, I would have shot this one at 3.5. Uh, your exposures and everything are fine, but I would shoot this at 3.5 and I would actually bring it down further. The reasons I would shoot this at 3.5 is because everything's in focus in the background. I don't want it in focus in the background. I like where you set up and I like what's going on. Another thing you could do is go to 45 millimeters. You'd be at 6.3, but you would back up and hopefully the stuff in the background would blow out of focus. This is where I would get a longer lens, step back, shoot wide open, focus on the goalpost so that the, 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 the mist in the background, the fog they call it in Australia, would just be there out of focus. Because what makes this not a great image is that everything's in focus, it looks more like a snapshot. So the things you could do, wider open with this lens at 3.5, get a little closer, fill the frame with it. I like the composition so you don't have to get closer, but see if you can blow out the background. Or go to 45 at 6.3, step back further, see if that will work because it's a deep background. But at f8, not cutting it. Okay, all right, I can live with these. It's, these are basic. Settings, great settings. Followed my, you followed my advice because I put out a video on how to shoot stars and 20 seconds is great. 3.5, wide open, even on a kit lens. This is a kit lens and it's doing it at uh, 15 millimeters ISO 800. Good job, sir, uh, or girl. I don't know that this is a guy or girl. Good job, person, uh, non-knowing non whether you're male or female, not that it matters. Um, nice job on this. The tree's fine. You're getting some dimension in there. Sometimes foreground elements definitely help when you're doing these type of nighttime photos. This is very nice. I love the fact that they were able to do this with basic kit lenses. It's real simple to shoot the stars. Try it with any camera that you have. Widest lens, widest aperture, ISO somewhere that get, allows you to get 20 seconds or 15 seconds of exposure. And the reason you want that is anything over 20 seconds, remember the world is turning, it's not flat. So it's always turning. No comments about flat earth, please, because it's not flat. It's round, it spins, it's like a ball. It's like you know, it goes this way, or it goes this way. I don't know which way it spins, but it spins, okay? So because it's spinning, if you have an exposure of too long, the, the, the stars are going to blur. Moving on to the last image it looks like. Ooh, okay. Three, five, uh, okay. So with this, composition is, this is cropped, isn't it? This is definitely cropped. That's not a proper aspect ratio. Um, I love the light and it's a little harsh on the contrast. I'm a big contrast fan. If I were you, you're gonna turn his face, his nose this way. This could be a self-portrait for all I know, but you wanna face the light more because you want your bluish eyes. What is with Australia? Like everybody in Australia is like blonde hair, good looking, surfers, blue eyes. I don't care, guys, girls, they're all good looking. Have you ever met an Australian that's not good looking? No, no, I haven't. No, no, I haven't. Put your hand down in there. You haven't either. Okay, so what I would do is make sure that you turn to the light more. So if this isn't a self-portrait, turn, 
the person to the light. Use the light to your advantage coming in through that window. It's a very thick, contrasty photo. I'm happy with it. I like that. I like what you've done, whoever you are, photographer. I like what you've done here. You've done a great job with the EOS M50, kit lenses, and also some of the wider, faster lenses. Very nice with composition. I like your processing. It resonates with me. I like your composition. You're doing a really good job. If you guys out there have not checked out FroPack 1, which are 14 custom Lightroom presets, go to fronosphoto.com slash presets, watch the video, see how we edited the images with befores and afters, and also scroll down this page because you can play with all the different ones like, oh, Boomify, that's what it looks like before, and boom! That's what it looks like after. If you'd like to check those out, go to fronosphoto.com slash presets. They're 40% off, meaning it's 30 bucks to get those presets. They're awesome. Thank you guys very much for watching. You can submit your critique -y stuff to bit.ly slash frocritiques, and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Subscribe to me if you'd like. Leave comments down below if you'd like, and I'm gonna shut up. Thank you for watching. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.